This video is about the United States Air Force uniforms. This information can be found in Air Force Instruction 362903, Dress and Appearance of Air Force Personnel. Formal and mess dress uniforms are worn for official formal evening functions and state occasions. The white and black tie tuxedo or evening gown is the civilian equivalent. Note, the formal dress uniform is worn by officers only. The mess dress uniform is mandatory for officers and optional for enlisted. A name tag is not worn on formal or mess dress uniforms. Enlisted may wear the semi-formal service dress uniform if they do not have a mess dress. Saluting is not required when wearing formal or mess dress uniforms. Men's formal and mess dress uniforms. Coat formal and mess dress. Officers will wear coat without silver chain. Fasteners, formal only. The coat will be blue, single-breasted, with a straight back. And three, wing and star, buttons on each side of the front of the coat. The coat will have a satin shawl collar and lapels. With arms hanging naturally, semi-fitted sleeves will end one quarter to one half inch below the wrist. The center of the back of the coat will extend three and a half to four inches below the natural waistline. Shoulder boards, formal and mess dress. Officers will wear shoulder board rank as close to the shoulder seam as possible. General officers will wear a three-quarters inch wide silver sleeve braid, three inches from the end of the sleeve. All other officers will wear a one-half inch silver sleeve braid, three inches from the end of the sleeve. Rank mess dress. Enlisted will wear either three and a half or four inch, white chevron rank centered on the outer arm halfway between the shoulder seam and elbow when bent at a 90 degree angle. Shirt formal and mess dress. The shirt will be a commercial design, plain, white, and long sleeved. The shirt will not have military creases. A white V-neck or athletic style tank top undershirt will be worn under the shirt. Both shirts will be tucked into the trousers. The formal dress shirt will have a wing collar. The mess dress shirt will have turned down collar, pleats, and French cuffs. Bow tie. The bow tie is mandatory and will be white with square ends for formal. Dress uniform and bow tie will be blue satin for mess dress uniform. Vest, cummerbund. The vest is worn with the formal dress uniform in place of the cummerbund. It will be white, single-breasted, low-cut, rolled-collar vest with pointed collar. The vest will not be visible below the mess dress coat. The cummerbund is worn with the mess dress uniform and will be plain blue satin, worn halfway between the shirt and trousers, with the open edge of the pleats facing upward. Suspenders, mess dress. Suspenders will be either solid white, dark blue or black and will be attached to the trousers and will not be visible. Trousers, formal and mess dress. Trousers will be blue, without pleats and cuffs. They will have a high-rise with side pockets and 7 8 inch blue striping down pant legs. Socks black. Socks will be plain without design, clean, and serviceable. Black socks will be worn with low quarters, dress boots and black jungle, combat boots. Plain white socks may be worn under the black socks as long as the white socks are not visible. Low quarters. Black low quarters are worn with the formal dress, mess dress, semi-formal, service dress and service uniforms. Black combat boots and dress boots are also an option with the service dress and service uniform. Shoes will be low quarter, Oxford style, lace up with a plain rounded toe or a plain rounded capped toe. Soles will not exceed one half inch in thickness and the heel will not exceed one inch in height, measured from the inside front of the heel. Shoes will be smooth or scotch grained leather or man made material. Shoes will be shined. High gloss or patent finish is optional. Dress boot can be worn with the service dress and service uniforms. If worn, the dress boot sole will be black plain rounded toe or rounded capped toe. A zipper or elastic inserts may be worn, however, if worn, they will be without design. The sole will not exceed one half inch in thickness and heel will not exceed one inch in height, measured from the inside front of the heel. High gloss or patent finish is optional. Women's formal and mess dress uniforms. Coat. Officers will wear the mess dress coat. The mess dress coat will be blue, single-breasted, loose fitting at the waist with three, wing and star, buttons on each side of the front of the coat. The coat will have a satin shawl collar and lapels. With arms hanging naturally, semi-fitted sleeves will end one quarter to one half inch below the wrist. The center of the back of the coat will extend two and a half to three inches below the natural waistline. The front opening will gap approximately two to three inches at bottom. Officers will wear shoulder board rank as close to the shoulder seam as possible. 
General officers will wear a three-quarters inch wide silver sleeve braid, two and a half inches from the end of the sleeve. All other officers will wear a one-half inch silver sleeve braid, two and a half inches from the end of the sleeve. Enlisted will wear either three and a half or four inch, white chevron rank centered on the outer arm halfway between the shoulder seam and elbow when bent at a 90 degree angle. Blouse. The mess dress blouse will be worn with the women's formal dress uniform. The blouse will not have military creases. Studs and cuff links are optional, but if worn, must be worn as a set. White undershirts may be worn in the V-neck, athletic style tank top or crew neck style and if worn, must be tucked into the skirt. Tie tab. The tie tab is mandatory and will be a 1-inch crescent-shaped silver metallic cloth, lame tie tab for formal dress uniform and a blue satin inverted V tie tab with self-fastening tails for mess dress uniform. Cummerbund. The cummerbund for formal dress uniform will be plain silver satin, cummerbund for the mess dress uniform will be plain blue satin. Cummerbunds will be worn halfway between the shirt and skirt with open edge of pleat facing upward. Cummerbunds will be without design. Skirt. The mess dress skirt will be used for the women's formal dress uniform. Hosiery. Hosiery may be worn with the formal dress, mess dress, semi-formal dress, and service dress uniform, skirt. If worn, hosiery will be plain commercial, sheer, nylon in neutral, dark brown, black or off-black, or dark blue shades. Patterned hosiery is not authorized to be worn with any uniform. If not wearing hosiery with slacks, plain, not patterned, black socks may be worn. Socks black. Socks will be plain without design, clean, and serviceable. Black socks will be worn with low quarters, dress boots and black jungle, combat boots. Plain white socks may be worn under the black socks as long as the white socks are not visible. Low quarters. Can be worn, optional, with the semi-formal, enlisted only. Service dress and service uniforms, authorized with all maternity uniforms. Commercially designed low quarters will be black Oxford, lace-up style with a plain rounded toe, or a plain rounded cap toe. The sole will not exceed one half inch in thickness and the heel will not exceed one inch in height, measured from the inside front of the heel, however, the sole may have a low wedge heel. They will be plain, clean and serviceable, and without ornamentation such as buckles, bows, or straps. The material will be smooth, scotch-grained leather or a man-made material. They may be high gloss or patent finish. Dress boots can be worn, optional, with the service dress and service uniforms, authorized with all blue maternity uniforms. Wear boots with skirt or slacks, however, if worn with skirt, remove boots while in the workplace and wear pumps, slip-on shoes, or low quarters. Heels will be of a height suitable to the individual but no higher than two and a half inches, measured from the inside sole of the boot to the end of the heel lift. The tip of the heel cannot be less than one half inch in diameter or larger than the body of the boot. Pointed or squared toes and extreme heel shapes are not authorized. They will be plain, clean and serviceable, and without ornamentation such as buckles, bows or straps. The material will be smooth, scotch-grained leather or a man-made material. They may be high gloss or patent finish. Pumps will be worn with the formal dress, mess dress, and semi-formal uniforms authorized with all blue maternity uniforms. Optional with the service dress and service uniforms. Black pumps will be low cut and rounded throat, the top opening, with a raised heel no higher than 3 inches, measured from the inside sole of the shoe to the end of the heel lift. The tip of the heel cannot be less than one half inch in diameter or larger than the body of the shoe. Pointed or squared toes and extreme heel shapes are not authorized. They will be plain, clean and serviceable, and without ornamentation such as buckles, bows or straps. The material will be smooth, scotch-grained leather or a man-made material. They may be high gloss or patent finish. Slip-on shoes can be worn, optional, with the service dress and services uniforms authorized with all blue maternity uniforms. Commercially designed step-in shoe where the top of the shoe goes over the top of the foot, not mule types without backs, with rounded toe or plain rounded capped toe. Pointed or squared toes and extreme heel shapes are not authorized. They will be plain, clean and serviceable, and without ornamentation such as buckles, bows or straps. The material will be smooth, scotch-grained leather or a man-made material. They may be high gloss or patent finish. Semi-formal dress uniform, enlisted only.
The men's and women's semi-formal dress uniform is worn for social functions of a semi-formal and or official nature as prescribed by the commander or equivalent. The enlisted semi-formal dress uniform coat is the service dress uniform coat without a name tag. Semi-formal is the same term used when describing the civilian equivalent. When in semi-formal dress, saluting is not required. Men's semi-formal dress uniform. White long sleeve shirt. The white long sleeve shirt will be plain, knit or woven, commercial type with a short or medium point collar, with button or French cuffs. Military creases are not authorized. A white V-neck or athletic style tank top undershirt will be worn under the shirt. Both shirts will be tucked into the trousers. Tie and tie tack clasp. Either a blue polyester or silk, herringbone twill tie will be worn with the semi-formal dress uniform. The tip of the tie must cover a portion of the belt buckle, but cannot extend below the bottom of the belt buckle. A tie tack or clasp is optional. However, if worn the tie tack or clasp will be the, wing and star, design, air force symbol, or rank insignia. The tie tack or clasp will be centered between the bottom edge of the knot and bottom tip of the tie. Trousers. The enlisted semi-formal dress uniform trousers are the same as the service dress uniform trousers. Women's semi-formal dress uniform. Blouse. The semi-form fitting white blouse will be polyester or cotton, princess line, button front, with small pointed collar. Military creases are not authorized. A white V-neck or, athletic style tank top undershirt may be worn under the shirt. If either style of undershirt is worn, the undershirt will be tucked into the skirt. Tie tab. The blue satin inverted V-tie tab with self-fastening tails is mandatory. Skirt or slacks. The enlisted semi-formal dress uniform skirt or slacks are the same as the service dress uniform skirt or slacks. Dot. Service dress uniform, class A and B, male and female. The service dress uniform is worn as class A and the service blue uniform as class B. The class A uniform is worn with the service dress coat. The class B uniform is worn without the service dress coat. Coat class A. The service dress coat will be polyester and wool blend, serge weave, semi-drape, single-breasted with three buttons and will have one welt pocket on the upper left side and two lower pocket flaps. Officer's coat will have epaulettes, enlisted coats will have no epaulettes. General officers will wear a one and a half inch wide blue sleeve braid, three inches from the end of the sleeve. All other officers will wear a one half inch wide blue sleeve braid three inches from the end of the sleeve. With arms hanging naturally, sleeves will end one quarter to one half inch below the wrist. The bottom of the coat will extend three to three and a half inches below the top of the thigh. The sleeves and lapel will be roll pressed. Men's blue shirt and women's blouse, class A and B. Long sleeve, short sleeve blue shirt, male. The long sleeve and short sleeve blue shirt will be light blue in color with two pleated pockets, convertible cuffs, long sleeve only, and epaulettes. The collar of the shirt will be visible one quarter to one half inch above the service dress coat collar. With arms hanging naturally, sleeves will end one quarter to one half inch below the wrist, but not be visible below the sleeves of the service coat. The blue shirt will be neatly tucked into the trousers. The shirt may be altered for a tapered fit. A white V-neck or athletic style tank top, or crew neck style, long sleeve blue shirt only undershirt will be worn under the shirt. Name tag. The name tag will be blue plastic with the last name engraved in white lettering. The name tag will be centered, resting on, but not over the edge of the pleated. Pocket on the wearer's right. Tie. A tie will be worn with the service dress uniform and or service blue uniform, long sleeve blue shirt. The tie will be either blue polyester or silk, herringbone twill. The tip of the tie must cover a portion of the belt buckle, but cannot extend below the bottom of the belt buckle. A tie tack or clasp may be worn with the tie. If worn, the tie tack or clasp will be the, wing and star, design, air force symbol, or rank insignia. The tie tack or clasp will be centered between the bottom edge of the knot and bottom tip of the tie. A tie is required to be worn with the long sleeve blue shirt however, it is optional with the short sleeve blue shirt unless worn with service dress. Blouse, long and short sleeved, female. The pointed end collar of the shirt must show one quarter to one half inch above the service dress coat collar with arms hanging naturally. It will not have military creases and will have epaulettes. With arms hanging naturally, long sleeves will end one quarter to one half inch below the wrist, but not be visible below the sleeves of the service coat. 
The long sleeved blouse will have rounded cuffs with buttonhole closures on each cuff. The blouse may be modified at the airman's expense to accommodate cuff links. White, V neck, athletic style tank top or crew neck style, long sleeve blouse only undershirts are optional. If worn, they will be tucked into the skirt or slacks. Tuck in style blouse, long or short sleeved. The blue blouse will have a tapered fit and will be tucked into the slacks or skirt. Semi form fitting blouse, long or short sleeved. The blue blouse will be a semi form fitting princess line. Name tag. The name tag will be blue plastic with the last name engraved in white lettering. The name tag will be centered, even within one and a half inches higher or lower than the first exposed button on the wearer's right. Tie tab. An inverted V tie tab will be worn with the service dress uniform and or long sleeve blue shirt. The tie tab will be blue polyester herringbone with self-fastening tails when worn with the tuck in style blouse and with or without self-fasteners with the semi-form fitting blouse. A tie tab is required to be worn with long sleeved blouse however, it is optional with the short sleeved blouse unless worn with service dress. Trousers, slacks, skirt class A and B. Trousers, male. Trousers will be blue and trim fitted with no bunching at the waist or bagging at the seat. The trousers will be full cut, straight hanging and without cuffs or additional alterations to further taper the leg. The front of the trouser legs will rest on the front of the shoe or boot with a slight break in the crease. The back of the trouser legs will be 7 8 inch longer than the front. The trouser material will match the service dress coat in both fabric and shade. Slacks, female. Slacks will be blue and fit naturally over the hips with no bunching at the waist or bagging at the seat. The bottom front of the slack legs will rest on the front of the shoe, boot or on top of the foot if wearing pumps, with a slight break in the crease. The back of the slack legs will be approximately 7 8 inch longer than the front. The slacks will be tailored, straight hanging, with no flare at the bottom or additional alterations to further taper the leg. They will have a center fly front opening in front and back waist darts, two one-quarter top side pockets, and a waistband with five belt loops. The slacks material will match the service dress coat in both fabric and shade. Skirt, female. The skirt will be polyester or poly wool, blue and hang naturally over the hips with a slight flare. The skirt will be no shorter than the top of the kneecap and no longer than the bottom of the kneecap when standing at attention. The skirt will be straight style with belt loops, a kick pleat in the back, two pockets, and a darted front. Skirts will have a back zipper and lining attached to the waist. Skirt material will match the service dress coat in both fabric and shade long sleeve blue shirt. The tie tab will be blue polyester herringbone with self-fastening tails when worn with the tuck in style blouse and with or without self-fasteners with the semi-form fitting blouse. A tie tab is required to be worn with long-sleeved blouse however, it is optional with the short-sleeved blouse unless worn with service dress. The Operational Camouflage Pattern OCP, Men's and Women's the OCP may be worn off base for short convenience stops and when eating at restaurants where people wear comparable civilian attire. Do not wear OCPs off base to eat in restaurants where most diners wear business attire or at establishments that operate primarily to serve alcohol. Do not starch or hot press the OCP. Light ironing is authorized, however, repeated hot pressing or heavy ironing will accelerate the overall wear of the fabric. OCPs purchased by Air Force personnel through the Army Air Force Exchange Stores AAFES, Military Clothing Sales Stores MCSS, or issued through individual equipment elements or contract equivalent, are certified as fully compliant with all specifications. No other suppliers are approved for organizational, unit purchases, or any appropriated or overseas contingency operation funds expenditures. If personnel choose to use personal funds to purchase from non-AAFES suppliers, the Air Force is not responsible if the uniform is not fully compliant. The non-fire retardant and improved hot weather combat OCP uniforms are the only OCP uniforms authorized to be worn by all airmen. OCP coat shirt. The coat is worn outside the trousers. Note, commanders may authorize the coat to be tucked in for duty, e.g., security forces airmen, if necessary. The coat will not extend below the top of the cargo pocket on the trousers and will not be higher than the bottom of the opening of the side, hip pocket on the trousers. 
airmen may roll up sleeves on the OCP coat, however, the cuffs will remain visible and the sleeve will rest at, or within one inch of, the forearm when the arm is bent at a 90 degree angle. When sleeves are not rolled up, cuffs may remain visible or be folded inward twice. Commanders may prohibit rolling of sleeves and folding of cuffs. Patches or badges will not be affixed to the front pockets. Alterations that affect the functionality of the uniform are not authorized, e.g., sewing down collars, or pockets. The OCP coat may be removed in the immediate work area as determined appropriate by local leadership, however, the OCP coat will be worn while interacting with customers or clients. T-shirt. T-shirt will be coyote brown, tan 499, and will be tucked into OCP trousers. Commanders may authorize unit patches or organizational symbols to be printed on the left breast provided the design is conservative, not used in a deployed environment and does not exceed 5 inches in diameter. OCP trouser. The OCP trousers are worn buttoned in with a belt. The trouser waistband will rest on the airman's waist. Pockets will be secured and items stowed in pockets. Will not be visible. Exception, OCP patrol cap or beret may extend outside when placed in the OCP trouser cargo pocket. Airmen may wear the trousers tucked into the top of the boots or bloused using the drawstrings at the bottom of the trousers, or commercial blousing devices if the trousers are not tucked into the boots. Airmen will not wrap the trouser leg around the leg tightly enough to present a pegged appearance or insert any items inside the trouser leg to create a round appearance at the bottom of the trouser leg. When bloused, the trousers will not extend below the third eyelet from the top of the boot. Belt. A one-piece tan 499 rigger style, nylon, web belt will be worn with OCP trousers, exception, maternity trousers. Belt may extend past buckle. Tactical and patrol OCP caps. A cap will be worn outdoors at all times, unless in a designated, no hat, area. Airmen will wear a cap straight on the head so that the cap band creates a straight line around the head, parallel to the ground. Cap will fit snugly and comfortably around the largest part of the head without bulging or distortion from the intended shape of the headgear and without excessive gaps. No hair will be visible on the forehead beneath the cap. Airmen are authorized to block the patrol cap. The Velcro or sew on spice brown nametape will be worn centered on the back of the caps. Officers will wear either pinned, sewn or Velcro spice brown rank insignia centered one half inch on front of caps. Exception. First lieutenants and lieutenant colonels will wear black rank on OCP. Background. Velcro on hat should not exceed size of insignia. Chaplains may wear the chaplain occupational badge sewn on and centered one half inch above the visor. Enlisted members will not wear rank insignia or a subdued flag on the patrol or tactical cap, only a nametape on the back of the caps is authorized. The front of the cap must not have any Velcro or other items. Tactical caps may be solid OCP material or OCP with coyote brown mesh back. No. Other colors or combinations are authorized. Berets, when authorized, will be worn by designated personnel. Females are authorized to pull their bun or ponytail, equivalent through the back of the tactical cap. Upon acquisition of an Air Force tactical cap all other tactical caps will be unauthorized. Socks Airmen will wear DLA-issued green socks or coyote brown socks. Physical Training Gear, PTG. PTG is authorized for wear by Air Force military personnel, including retired personnel, and the Secretary and Undersecretary of the Air Force. Physical Training Gear, PTG, and PTG Running Suit. Installation commanders may temporarily adjust wear policy to address immediate safety or mission operation concerns and may be more restrictive with wear policy e.g., no hats or sunglasses during organized fitness events, no head, ear phones due to safety concerns, etc., to support unit cohesion and present a standardized image. Exception, squadron commanders may authorize the wear of the morale undershirt with all PTG on Fridays. The Air Force Reserves and Air National Guard commanders may authorize morale undershirt wear with all PTG during weekend drills on Friday, Saturday or Sundays. Wear of the PTG is mandatory during physical fitness assessments and while participating in organized PT events as designated by the commander. In addition, if PTG items are worn during individual, personal PT, the following guidelines apply, exceptions noted, PTG jacket. The jacket will be zipped at least halfway between the waistband and collar. Sleeves will end within one inch of the wrist. 
T-shirt, short sleeve PTG shirt. The short sleeve shirt can be either untucked or tucked into shorts or running pants. If untucked shirt must extend to the bottom of the side pocket on the shorts and pants but will not cover the shorts reflective material. Do not remove or cut sleeves. Short and long sleeved white, black, or light gray form fitting undershirts, i.e., spandex, lycra or elastic material, to include those with a mock neck may be worn and visible under the short sleeved PTG shirt. Undershirt must not extend lower or be longer than untucked PTG shirt. Commanders may standardize whether shirts will be worn tucked or untucked in formations or organized unit physical training. Optional long sleeve PTG shirt. The long sleeve shirt can be either untucked or tucked into shorts or running pants. If untucked shirt must extend to the bottom of the side pocket on the shorts and pants but will not cover the shorts reflective material. Do not push up, remove, or cut sleeves. Short and long sleeved form fitting undershirts, i.e., spandex, lycra or elastic material, to include those with a mock neck may be worn and visible, at neck only, under the long sleeved PTG shirt. Undershirt must not extend lower or be longer than untucked long sleeve PTG shirt. There is no color restriction on the form fitting undershirt unless visible, if visible, form fitting undershirts will be white, black, or light gray. Undershirt may have a visible small trademark logo. Commanders may standardize whether shirts will be worn tucked or untucked in formations or organized unit physical training. Optional PTG sweatshirt. The sweatshirt will extend no lower than 6 inches below the natural waistline. Do not push up, remove, or cut sleeves. Short and long sleeved form fitting undershirts, i.e. spandex, lycra or elastic material, to include those with a mock neck may be worn and visible, at neck only, under the PTG sweatshirt. Undershirt must be tucked in. There is no color restriction on the form-fitting undershirt. If visible, form-fitting undershirts will be white, black, or light gray. Undershirt may have visible small trademark logo. Shorts, running pants. PTG running pants. The waistband will rest at or within 2 inches of the natural waistline. Both pant legs will extend below the ankles and will be zipped to within 1 inch of the bottom. PTG shorts with reflective material and optional PTG running shorts without reflective material. The PTG shorts waistband will rest at or within 2 inches of the natural waistline. The lining in the PTG shorts may be removed. Short, mid and full length solid black, white or dark blue form fitting sportswear, i.e. Spandex, lycra or elastic, may be worn and visible under both the PTG and optional PTG running shorts. Footwear. Socks. Socks are mandatory. Socks will be of conservative solid color, black, white, dark blue, gray, desert sand, tan, DLA issued green, or coyote brown and may have small trademark logos. Local commanders may implement policies for standardization. Within units. Athletic style shoes. Athletic style shoes are mandatory. There are no restrictions. On the color of the athletic shoes, headgear. Installation commanders may authorize wear of an optional solid black, white or dark blue baseball, sport cap and or sweatband with the Air Force symbol or U.S. Air Force printed, embroidered on the front during organized PT. This is also authorized during individual PT. If authorized, caps are to be worn outdoors only. Commanders may authorize wear of an embroidered excellence for, in PT, solid black, white or dark blue baseball, sports cap. If worn, the baseball, sport cap will have the words, excellence for PT, excellence in PT, or a combination of the two, in small embroidered letters, no more than one half inch in height. Patches, large logos and multi-patterned caps are not authorized. Additional unit or organizational issued hats are not authorized with the PTG. Headgear may be worn during individual PT, but not indoors. Bandanas and other similar head scarves, headgear are not authorized unless due to medical waiver condition. Undergarments. Appropriate undergarments are required to be worn with all PTG combinations.